Empezamos con la noticia que nos llega desde Arauquita, esto es la zona de frontera con Venezuela. El combate entre disidentes de la guerrilla colombiana y las tropas enviadas desde Caracas comenzó el domingo en el estado de Apure, en Venezuela. The fact that the Colombian guerrilla is present in Venezuela is undeniable, especially after the violent events in Apure state. What this basically confirms is the, the fragility and volatility of the relationships between state actors and Colombian guerrilla organizations, which are mainly based on profits and shared illicit economies. What we actually see in the field is that when there are different non-state armed groups competing in a small area for the same illicit economy that sometimes the tensions become too much and state actors basically decide to favor one non-state armed actor above the other one this can lead to violent frictions if one wants to understand why the colombia guerrilla is so interested in the venezuelan territory um it's First of all, very important to understand that there are some tacit agreements with the Venezuelan state uh, between guerrilla leadership and Caracas. But also we see that the Colombian guerrilla is increasingly interested in Venezuela to use the country as a drug trafficking corridor, basically as a trampoline for cocaine coming from Colombia. We also see that Venezuela is going through a period of, of a real mining bonanza. But in the end, the rampaging gold mining sector is run by non-state armed actors with a very high participation of Colombian guerrilla groups. The behavior of Colombian guerrilla forces in Venezuela towards the local population is somehow similar to their behavior in Colombia because they're trying to, to sweet talk uh, communities, to give presence to community leaders. And when communities decide they don't want to collaborate with the guerrilla groups, There might be consequences, sometimes violent, sometimes they just occupy the lands. But still there's a difference with Colombia, because in Colombia we see that the guerrilla is more anxious because they have a natural enemy in the Colombian army and the Colombian state. In Venezuela, even though there are violent escalations, There is still some kind of a friendship between the Colombian guerrilla and the Venezuelan state. Nosotros no vamos a ir a sus comunidades ni en bien ni en mal. Si ustedes mañana o pasado mañana piden que, que nos quieran escuchar y quieren dialogar con nosotros, lo vamos a hacer. Still, they're trying to apply divide and conquer strategies in communities. And what we especially see down south in the Venezuelan Amazon is that the guerrilla is trying to manipulate uh, a lot of people and basically wants to force an entrance in these areas. <laughs> venezolanos que han decidido empuñar las armas para defender su patria al lado nuestra. Nosotros no vamos a sus comunidades, no los molestamos y ustedes pues también nos respetan el espacio que tenemos acá. And what indigenous sources tell me is that there are deep cultural divisions caused by the presence of the guerrilleros in their territory. And of course, there's also a very big issue with environmental contamination because of the increased gold mining activities, which are destroying the natural habitats of ancient civilizations um, in the southern parts of Venezuela. We don't think that the violence immediately poses a threat to Colombia, and we think it's a very local issue so far. Nevertheless, what we've seen is that um, the Colombian government has sent more military to the border, as did the Venezuelan government. And the mere presence of an increased amount of armed troops along the borderline, because of the local 
struggles in Venezuela might generate more tensions between both countries. But the current governments of Ivan Duque in Colombia and Nicolas Maduro in Venezuela broke off diplomatic relations, which means that there is no line of communication to de-escalate growing risks of violence along the borderline. We strongly recommend both governments to do everything within their possibilities to re-establish a channel of communication to prevent the situation from getting worse.